This is my railroad attachment that I made for an old mountain bike I have. I was trying to make something that could be folded up onto the bike and then could be ridden to and from the tracks. The front roller swings down onto the track and then you pull this lever to lock it down. With this linkage here, I can adjust how much pressure is on the front roller. Then the back outrigger swings down and then telescopes out to about five foot to get to the other track. All this does is keeps your balance so you don't tip over. For the front roller, I'm using a rubber longboard wheel with two locating discs on each side. So I'm locating on both sides of just one rail, which can be a problem when crossing roads. In urban areas, there are two problems that you run into uh, that you don't when you're out in the country. The first is that they butt the pavement up to the outside of the rails at a road crossing. And the second is that they weld grounding straps on the outsides of the rails near road crossings. I guess this tells the crossing gates when a train is coming. So I had to make my locating discs on the front wheel a half inch wider to clear these grounding straps. Trains don't have flanges on the outside. They only locate on the inside of each track, but I didn't want to do it that way because I'm trying to keep this as small and as compact as possible to be able to fit on the bike. Here on the coast of Central California, we have about 40 miles of abandoned tracks that stretch up and down the coast. Since I've made my rail bike, I've been doing about a 25 mile round trip ride on these tracks in the evening. I've actually found that it's easier to ride across town on the rails than it is the road. 